Hey everyone, uh, thanks, thanks for coming. So today I'll do a, um, a deep dive into AutoML tables, which was uh, recently announced at Google Next in San Francisco in April. So I'll go over uh, what the product is as, as well as go over some latest updates uh, since, since then, uh, some, some additional features that we've launched. Uh, and then after that, Da will go over uh, some details of our model and our feature engineering because we think that, especially for many of you who are like competitors in Kaggle competitions, it'll be very, it'll be very uh, useful and interesting for you. And then I'll make some final announcements at the end. So a recap is that in April, we, we launched a product called AutoML Tables. The goal is really to enable your entire team of uh, data scientists and people with people with more or less uh, ML experience to automatically build and deploy state-of-the-art machine learning models on structured data at massively increased speed and scale. Um, we guide users through the entire end-to-end -end machine learning life cycle, and I'll skip over this because I'll actually show you a demo in a bit of exactly what it looks like. What we really focused on doing well is being able to automatically handle uh, uh, a, a wide variety of feature inputs. So we automatically do feature engineering for numbers, timestamps, classes, uh, strings, and also lists of things and nested fields. So uh, one thing that has come up a lot in discussion is that actually what you can do with AutoML tables is you can put user events, user transactions in a list of nested fields, and then directly put that in as an input into the model, and the model will automatically do feature engineering on it, right? Um, we really hope that it would become kind of like your experience with like GBM or like XGBoost, but just with numbers and classes, but extending to all the major data types that you might come across and even more in the future. And we also seek to be resilient to and provide guardrails for dealing with imbalanced data, missing values, outliers, highly correlated features, high cardinality features like IDs, and so forth. What we do for you is we automatically search through Google's, basically our whole model zoo of options that we use internally, ranging from linear and logistic models for simpler data sets, all the way to neural and architecture, neural and tree architecture search, uh, which Da will go over in a bit. Um, so basically, whatever is the appropriate model, we'll, we'll try to find it for you based on the data you've provided us. And, a, and the final point is you, get, you can save money. We don't charge any expensive license fee. It's basically a small percentage over the cost of the underlying compute. So whatever compute resources we use, that's basically what we're charging you. Now, that was the launch announcement in uh, April of this year. But since then, uh, what we've heard from many users, including Kagglers, is that you want several things. One is you want it to be even cheaper. Another is you want this to cover more data set types and options. Uh, we've heard that you want more transparency into the model. Uh, you want more explainability, like what's the reason the model is making this prediction, right? Uh, uh, you want to be able to download the model and take it to go, right? Run it somewhere else, that's fine, right? And you also want more controls over the overall training system, right? So here's what I'm here to announce today. So uh, since our launch at Next, we've added both early stopping to make it, we actually find that some people used to train for like 20 hours. Uh, now we can stop you within an hour or two, right? To save you a lot of money. And we're also faster now in smaller data sets. We can take data as small, so, uh, we can take data anywhere from 1,000 rows to 100 million rows right now, as well as up to 500 labels for classification, so more data set options. Uh, this is a big one for Kagglers. So Kagglers have asked for, hey, you, you train a great model, but what is the uh, resulting model? Can I look at it? So now we expose all of the feature engineering and all of the model architectures. Was it a neural net? Was it a tree? What type of neural net? All of that is now exposed in logs for you to dig through, right? Uh, we also provide SHAP-based feature attributions per prediction, so you can explain your features. Uh, sorry, you can explain the impact of each feature on the final prediction. Uh, and then you can export your model. So the resulting model, it's usually an ensemble. You can export it in a custom container. You take it to ten TensorBoard, 
and really deep dive into it and see exactly what we did and potentially improve on it if you, if you want. And finally, we have more optimization objectives as well, uh, specifically focused on imbalanced data situations and a variety of others also. Um, and we'll only, we know this is the direction that you guys are, are, are telling us about that we should go in and we'll only do more in the future. So now I'll do a quick demo just to give you a sense of, for those of you that might be new to AutoML tables, I'll do a quick demo just to show you what the experience is like now. Uh, so uh, first you, you ingest your data, right? So we assume that you've already put it into training data form. Uh, actually, that's where a lot of the art is. Um, uh, putting it into a form where like you have the right features in place already um, uh, Because that that's not that's not something that we can we can automate for you, right? You have to think about like, okay What would be relevant to this problem? But once you've put it into like a CSV or into a BigQuery table uh, Then you just select it and you ingest it after you ingest it um, We you can see all the columns on your table here and we automatically infer the data type. You can change it if you don't think it's right. And we also have some basic uh, hints, right? Like, so what percent is missing, invalid values, how many distinct values are there? Maybe it's too high cardinality. You can check for target leakage uh, based on the correlation with the target here. And you can deep, deep dive in any of these to see the distribution as well. Um, afterwards, let me close that. We also allow you to change how you do your, um, your data split here automatically. And then for training your model, here you can set your budget. Uh, usually just training for an hour is sufficient. Uh, choose which columns to include. So for example, ID column, because it has very high cardinality, you probably want to ignore it. Uh, we, we automatically ignore it as well, but just in case, you probably want to click it off. And then for advanced options, we have a growing number of optimization objectives and other controls like early stopping, right? So we'll, we'll try to double or triple this uh, later, later on uh, next year. After you train your model, you'll see all of the different models that were trained, as well as here a new link for model hyperparameters, right? So we'll actually share with you, this is what the output looks like. So in this case, one of the models trained uh, is a uh, ensemble of about, looks like it's about 25 models, and you can dig into the hyperparameters for every single one. So we didn't use L1 or L2 for this one. We did turn on batch norm. Uh, the type was a neural net, et cetera. Every single one would be different, it, because usually you want a very diverse ensemble um, in order to, uh, to generalize well. So, but each one of these will be different, right? Uh, and you can look at all of them if you'd like, uh, and as I said, you, we also allow you to download it. And then finally, after you look at the, uh, oh, and the next thing I should show you is the evaluation. So we also provide an evaluation tab. So overall metrics, uh, high level metrics, as well as feature importance. So in this case, this data set is using, this is a Kaggle data set. It's using the uh, different aspects of a house to predict what price it will sell for. So here you can see the different uh, features that are important. This one is based on SHAP values. So overall quality, the year built is important, general living area, et cetera. Uh, and then for using the model, you can use batch prediction. Uh, if you're make, for example, if you're making a Kaggle submission, you do online prediction, and you can also export your model in a custom container. And for online prediction, we also provide SHAP values now. Generating them takes a little bit of time, so I, I pre-generated them here, but this is an example, right? So you'll, you can see that for this particular home, the sales price was 200000 which is more than the average baseline home. So that's how SHAP values work, right? They, these uh, feature attributions, if you sum them up, they will add up to the difference between this particular prediction and the average. So they'll explain the contribution of each. So for example, the biggest contributor here is overall quality. Uh, the, the, the average overall quality is six in this data set. So the fact that it's eight, it's higher, uh, that's why this attribution is much higher here. And similarly, oh, this has a higher than average uh, second floor square footage, right? And so, and, and so forth. So that, that is the product. And now I will hand it over to, to Da to talk about the algorithm. 
Okay, in the following part, uh, I will be deep diving into the AutoML table, feature engineering, and the uh, model building pipeline. So, uh, we have before building this pipeline, we have done a lot of uh, use case studies, uh, learning how a general uh, data scientist uh, will be uh, doing in solving their uh, own tabular data problems. So we consolidate uh, all those common practices and uh, build up this uh, multi-phrases AutoML pipeline. It is composed of uh, uh, four phrases, including the auto data processing, the architecture search and tuning, and the uh, cross-validation backing and uh, in ensemble. Also include uh, deployment uh, phrases. Um, let me deep dive into the uh, each part. So for the auto data uh, preprocessing, uh, we did a lot of uh, researches and uh, we consolidate all the useful useful uh, data feature transformations uh, into the system. And uh, for each feature, we did a lot of transformation. So eventually, it, we will compose a full feature set, or we call a feature pool. And uh, you can imagine that this feature set uh, will be times as large as the original feature set. And as you can see, we, also, we will also uh, create additional uh, signal that indicating uh, the specific, whether the specific feature will be missing. And uh, this uh, big feature set will be fed into the next phrase, the architecture search and the tuning phrase. Uh, where it will be doing uh, multi-level decisions, including the auto uh, model type selection, layer construction, and the feature selection embedding, also including the hyperparameters tuning. So the, the key component here is the auto ML controller. Uh, the auto ML controller will, uh, basically it will maintain a uh, uh, internal state, and uh, based on this internal state, it will sample some decisions to com uh, to construct a model, uh, or we call it uh, trial, and uh, train the trial. After the trial is converged, we can get the uh, get the result of the trial, which we call the reward. We use that reward to update our uh, auto ML controller so that the auto ML controller can be aware of which kind of model is more promising and which kind of model uh, will be less promising. So later on, later on, uh, after we have run uh, a bunch of a bunch of models uh, uh, in in previous phrase, we kind of get a uh, get many many uh, trials, and uh, among this, uh, from these trials, we will do a, we will select the top end models, and uh, the key thing here is that uh, when we do the model selection, we also fully consider the diversity, in order to make the ensemble, uh, in order to make the uh, quality boost of ensemble can be um, more significant. And uh, here in this slide, I would like to show uh, some of our results in uh, last uh, cargo, car uh, cargo day competition in San Francisco, which happened uh, early this year. So uh, because it was uh, the first time we put the auto ML, our product, uh, into a real competition. So we, at that time, we didn't expect that uh, it will get a very good result. But fortunately, um, we, we get the best result in the first uh, in the first two hours of the competition, and uh, all, and the Google Auto ML uh, can kept uh, ranking at the first place uh, until until the, the the competition is close to finish, and uh, eventually we end up uh, ranking at the second place. And uh, another in, an interesting things uh, we we found. Uh, after the competition is that uh, if we uh, ensemble the auto ML model with the 
with a human model, we can get an even better, uh, better results. So here is a vision. For a human expert, uh, human expert can use AutoML tables to, to uh, prototype a decent good model uh, quickly. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, the AutoML table can also give some idea about, uh, to the human expert about what kind of model will be more promising. So eventually, human experts can work with uh, AutoML tables to uh, get an even better model. Another interesting thing we have done uh, is uh, to make the AutoML ta table as a cargo bot. Uh, this is the uh, uh, joint work uh, with the cargo team. And uh, here is the first competition that uh, the cargo board had. Uh, so the, let's take a look at the dynamic gift. So the X exit is showing the score, and the Y exit is showing how many teams have achieved the specific score. And the blue line is showing uh, the result of AutoML had, get, had got. So as you can see, uh, the AutoML table actually performs strongly for the first seven weeks of the 12 weeks competition, which is within the top 15. And uh, later on, uh, starting at the about December, uh, teams be begin to share the code and inside. As you can see, there is a suddenly boost starting at uh, December. So, and, uh, so finally, uh, the AutoML tables end up, ends up at uh, rank uh, the top 40 in this competition. Yeah, yes. And in terms of last announcements, um, Going back to something that Da mentioned, which is we're, we're hoping to supplement uh, and make every Kaggler stronger, right? So going forward, what we're going to do is uh, we already have that Kaggle bot, right, like Da mentioned. Uh, going forward, we're going to, uh, whatever that benchmark is, we're going to make that model download available freely for all Kagglers to use. You can take it and put it into TensorBoard and see exactly what our system found. Uh, we'll keep on updating our system to, to get the latest state of the art in there so you can always see like, hey, you know, trees are doing better nowadays on this data set. Maybe neural nets are doing better. Maybe certain connections are doing better. And hopefully that will make you even stronger as a Kaggler. So that's going to be available going forward. I don't know exactly when it's going to be implemented, but we're going to try to get it out there soon. Uh, because there's, there's really no way that we can replace you. Like in this, in this particular challenge, the reason, one of the reasons why we didn't get even better uh, right out of the gate was because actually a lot of it turned out to be that um, you had to do very close feature engineering to make sure that's not overfitting on the ID, the user ID, but the user ID was anonymous, right? It was, sorry, it was not anonymous, it was hidden. It was a, it was a special feature. It took a, a, a trained data scientist to find out how they had to change the data in order to do well. So like there's, there's that interplay that a machine will, it will have a hard time doing well at, which you need a human for. So that's what we're hoping that we can do together. Having said that, that's all I have.